Zadra at Energylandia is the world's tallest hybrid roller coaster. Built by Rocky Mountain Construction, Zadra is the company's first hybrid coaster that didn't reuse a former coaster's support structure. While the ride has the company's trademark smoothness and incredible elements, Zadra's pacing blew me out of the water. This ride feels completely unhinged in the best way possible. In this review, I will discuss Zadra and explain why it should make us excited for more fully custom RMC layouts in the future. Energy Landia is an infant in the amusement industry. The park opened just seven years ago in the summer of 2014. Yet the park already boasts 18 different roller coasters. Most of the park's early coasters were clones, but the park made waves in 2018 when they installed Hyperion, a massive intimate hypercoaster. But Energylandia was not done. In 2019, they opened Zadra a year earlier than expected. And this feat was even more remarkable given the fact that Zadra's structure partially collapsed in March of that year during the construction. Zadra has a commanding presence on Energylandia's skyline. The ride looks like a supersized version of Six Flags Great America's Goliath. Now, how tall Zadra stands is debated. Rocky Mountain Construction has stated that Zadra is 206 feet, or 63 meters tall, which is one foot taller than Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. However, after Iron Gwazi was announced to be 206 feet tall as well, Energylandia started claiming that Zadra is now 209 feet, or 64 meters tall, presumably so it can maintain its status as the world's tallest hybrid roller coaster. Although the park doesn't even consider Zadra a steel coaster, they classify this ride as a wood coaster, and the merchandise for the ride comically shows traditional wood coaster track instead of RMC's distinctive eye box track, but I digress. Zadra anchors the Smoxie Grod or Dragon Zone section of Energy Landia, and it is an absolute trek to ride Zadra. Not only is it towards the back of this massive theme park, but Zadra boasts one of the longest and most frustrating queue lines in the amusement industry. The entrance is towards the back of the Smoxie Grot area, but the entire queue line then takes 7 minutes to navigate, even if there's no one ahead of you in line. And that was moving at a brisk pace as well. Now I understand when rides have long queue lines out of necessity. Take the Bat at Kings Island for example. That ride's queue line is long, but at least it's a straight shot because the ride is all alone on a dead end. Zadra's queue line is unnecessarily complex. After passing through the entrance sign, you go up and down three different flights of stairs. The purpose of these stairs are to cross over a pathway that Energylandia created that circles around Zadra. While that pathway is cool for photographers, it's pretty puzzling why it exists because there are no attractions, shops, or stands on it. It more or less just makes it hard for people to actually get to and off Zadra. At the end of these stairs is a second plaza. You have the fast pass machines, and to answer your question, yes. You have to walk through half the queue line just to access the machines to get a fast pass. And then you have two separate queue lines that diverge at this point. One to redeem a fast pass that has a straightforward 30 second shot to the station, and another that has the main standby line. And this standby line winds its way through Zadra's structure. There are some long switchbacks with super tall fences that make it impossible to cut through if the line is short. Even when the coaster had a 60 minute wait, the line only filled the final switchback. I seriously think that Zadra's queue line is long enough to accommodate every single guest in the park in a given day. Now right before the station there are lockers to store any belongings you cannot take with you. And with the sheer length of the queue line, there are two other aspects about it that I dislike. First, the queue line is super wide. While it does sound awesome at first, it was a line cutter's dream. People would effortlessly walk past you because there is no way to block them like a traditional line. Second, I do not like the loading system used on Zadra. Just outside the station are four turnstiles. These turnstiles are automatic and unmanned. After each cycle, a monitor above the turnstile displays how many riders can go through. The left one is for the front row. This one lets in two riders each cycle. That one makes sense to me, and if it was completely filled, it took roughly an extra half hour to board Zadra. The second from the left is for single riders. On paper, that sounds like a great idea to ensure that every seat is filled. But this line lets in six riders each time, regardless of how many people from the other rows are let in. 
and then once the doors to the station open, this single rider line has access to every single row, except for the front. More or less, the single rider line was for rows towards the front of the train. The two on the right are listed for all other rows. The one weird thing about this is that the rightmost line allows eight riders through, while the second from the right only allows six riders. And if you're doing the math, that means Zadra lets in 22 riders instead of the 24 that it can accommodate. Typically, the right turnstile will reactivate at the very end to then allow an extra two riders to fill the final seats. So the rightmost line is easily the fastest because it allows the most riders. This is the same turnstile system that was also used on Hyperion. When the doors opened, it was a scramble to get the row you wanted and keep your group together. The back was my favorite row in Zadra, so I typically would wait at the turnstile, so I was the first one through, which made me the first one at the door. This maximized my odds of getting the back row. I thought the back was the best seat for forces, but the front was great to experience a few times as well for the superior sense of speed. While the loading procedure is chaos, the restraint check process is like a well-oiled machine. If you've ever ridden an RMC, you know these trains are a royal pain to check. Stacking is almost guaranteed on most RMCs because of how heavy the lap bars are to lift and how the employees need to check both the seat belts and lap bars. I'm shocked and proud to say that I never saw Zadra's crew stack once over the course of three days, which is downright remarkable. Zadra usually had a five to six person crew and they wasted no time loading those trains. They would quickly check your seatbelt and lower your restraint for you. They would push the restraints down pretty hard because of how quickly they were moving, but don't worry, Zadra's airtime is so strong you'll have no trouble feeling it no matter how hard the restraint comes down. Zadra begins with a slow turn out of the station, and then you ascend the massive lift hill. This lift hill faces away from the park, so the only view you get is of the new Aqualantis area and the surrounding village. Once atop the lift, you plunge down the 90 degree drop. And this drop is incredible. This drop offers fantastic airtime. Those in the back get the standard great RMC ejector airtime on the drop, but it's more sustained than usual due to the drop's added height. And the drop even offers some floater airtime towards the front of the train for a change. Not only is this drop massive, but it also is an incredible head chopper at the bottom with this coaster's dense wooden support structure. Because of this structure, you cannot see the bottom of the drop from the top, which makes this drop even crazier. And it also hides the speed hill at the bottom. Like many other RMCs, Zadra is a speed hill that delivers an abrupt pop of airtime that follows the first drop. But this one is different because it twists to the right. And since this hill has barely any banking, you get a strong lateral jolt in addition to that airtime. While the speed hill on most RMCs feels like a bonus or filler element, it is a memorable moment on Zadra. It is the wildest RMC speed hill without a doubt due to those laterals. You then ascend Zadra's unique and forceful turnaround. It starts with this tight, massive upwards twist, which pulls some uncharacteristically strong positive G's for an RMC. I would gray out in this element on every ride. At the apex, you straighten out and traverse a super tight peak. This surprisingly only offered floater airtime up front, albeit strong and sustained floater airtime. It's just rare to get that type of airtime on an RMC. But those in the back got the powerful and sustained ejector airtime that I expect. Zadra then traverses a gigantic stall below the lift hill, similar to the one on Goliath. This inversion offers a few seconds of weak and sustained hang time, but what's more notable about this element are the transitions into and out of it. You are really whipped to and out of the stall, which induces some wild laterals. Zadra then flies around the second turnaround, which is a twist and shout similar to the far turnaround on Lightning Rod. This element offers a beautiful concoction of laterals and sideways ejector airtime in every seat. And it doesn't feel like you slow down one bit on this element, which makes it feel even more extreme. Zadra then twists back down to the ground and rapidly twists to the right. This fast turn offers some decent positive G's, and those G's continue on the sharp rise into the next camelback. I would start to see some gray on a few of my rides here. This camelback is one of the largest airtime hills that RMC has ever made, and offers several seconds of sustained airtime. 
it feels like a weaker version of Storm Chaser's second hill. Those towards the front get several seconds of good sustained ejector airtime consistently. Those towards the back need Zadra to warm up to get that type of airtime. On the early morning rides, I was getting weaker, but just a sustained ejector airtime. Then comes another neat turnaround. This one feels like the step up underflip on Joker at Discovery Kingdom. You enter the zero G roll, which twists 180 degrees in the descent. The star of this inversion offers some laterals up front and hang time in all seats. Then when you whip downwards, you get good positive G's. You then rise up into a double down. The front offers decent ejector pops, while the back delivers the prototypically strong RMC ejector pops. But what I found notable about this element were the surprise laterals. The first hump twists to the right, and the second subtly twists to the left. And these twists are unbanked, so you are thrown side to side along with that airtime. That's followed by my favorite part of Zadra, this extreme twisted speed hill. You haul through all of Zadra's layout, but it is especially noticeable here. This element essentially rides like one of those Intimidator 305 transitions that fling you side to side, except you get a powerful RMC ejector pop in between. This element feels completely out of control. You then zip through the ride's final inversion, a zero G roll. You have so much speed into this element that it only offers a brief moment of weak hang time. Instead, this element is more about the laterals. You then charge into the brake run with enough speed to probably go another 1,000 or 2,000 feet. So you smoothly get flung forwards from how quickly you need to decelerate. Zadra navigates its 4,318 feet or 1,316 meters of track about as quickly as a coaster can. And when paired with a glass smooth ride, you have a recipe for a truly world-class coaster. So what would I rate Zadra? If it wasn't apparently obvious, this coaster is getting a perfect 10 out of 10. Zadra is one of the best RMCs. In fact, it's just one of the best coasters overall. This coaster has several excellent airtime and hang time moments, but it differentiates itself from the other RMCs with stronger laterals and perfect pacing. The pacing on this coaster is insane. Zadra does not give you a single moment to catch your breath, and because it wasn't used in a pre-existing structure, it was designed such that it maintains its speed better. The way Zadra quickly threw elements at riders and maintained its speed reminded me of the two RMCs at the Hershen Parks in Lightning Rod and Outlaw Run, both of which are also ground up layouts. While the RMC conversions are fantastic rides as well, these ground up ones feel distinctly different and that's a good thing. I cannot wait to see more. So those are my thoughts on Zadra, the best roller coaster at Energylandia. Have you been on Zadra? How do you think it compares to the other RMCs? I would love to hear your thoughts about this incredible coaster down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.